Yeah, so for everyone, um, I'm sure we have a whole bunch of people who may not be familiar with Avalanche. Um, Yoon, could you tell us a little bit about what Avalanche is, um, how people can you know, tie into it, and why it might be important for the overall community? Absolutely. And I think there's a very simple answer to what Avalanche is. It is simply the world's most advanced blockchain platform. It solves long-standing problems in the blockchain space that nobody knew to solve, and it solves them in a manner that is revolutionarily different from everything else that came before it. Now, I know you have heard similar words before, okay? I know you've heard just about everybody come up and say, we have a revolutionary this, that, and the other. But underneath it all, if you look at what they were doing, they were always recycling old, well-known protocols that don't actually address the problems at hand. Now, what are the problems of blockchains? Threefold. Uh, the first one is performance, and that means uh, quick latency, being able to interact with a blockchain as if it's a website. It also means uh, scalability, allowing as many people who want to be part of the system to be actually part of the system. And nobody comes anywhere near, near this, these two things. And uh, that's what Avalanche gives you. It gives you very low latency, very high throughput, and it scales with the number of participants. The second big problem was uh, flexibility. Everybody else's blockchains are fixed. They start out life with fixed parameters. They cannot be changed. And uh, some parameters in Avalanche cannot be changed, like the maximum number of coins. But just about everything else is up for grabs and you can introduce new virtual machines, you can control the network. And I can expand on what this means, but it's as revolutionary a step as Ethereum was on top of Bitcoin. And the third and final thing is governance. This is a chain for people, by people. It's a chain that is, de that is designed to serve its community and we are incredibly community-minded people ourselves. So those are the three things that we address. Our mission is different. We are not here to uh, compete with existing coins. We are not an Ethereum killer by any stretch. And we have a very different mission from everybody else who came before us. We're not trying to compete with fiat the way Bitcoin is. We're not trying to replace the dollar or the euro or whatever else. That's a tough battle. We wish, I wish Bitcoin luck. I want to see it succeed. May or may not. But uh, that's, that's a separate battle than the one we're fighting. What we are, and we're not trying to do what Ethereum is trying to do, which is general computational platform. We are here to digitize all the world's assets. We're going after the 72 trillion in assets that lie dormant in a manner that is just not tappable by blockchains. And so we've designed something from the ground up uh, for, di uh, for asset digitization. And I can expand again on the technical front why, what this means, why it's different from you know, things that other people might be familiar with. But at the highest level, we have a difference in technology and we have a difference in mission. The tech is the biggest thing that's happened since the Nakamoto white paper. So uh, there's literally nothing like it. It's a big step uh, in the science of digital systems. And the vision is different and the execution is different. So I hope that uh, that gives everybody a short summary. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Gun, for, for sharing that. I, I quickly wanted to, uh, you know, add on to what you said and talk uh, a little bit about for the audience why OKCoin, uh, you know, has listed AVAX and what we've been up to, you know, what's been on top of our mind as, as we observe some of the, the, the development on your guys' side. So for us, you know, we've been watching AVAX development or Avalanche developments before pre-mainnet pre and even after post-mainnet. And I think we're one of the fortunate exchange where, exchanges where we were able to develop this relationship with you guys and ultimately bring AVAX uh, to, to retail investors around the globe as the first fiat on-ramp exchange that, that got to offer it. So now, of course, you if you're a retailer or an investor, rather, you can come onto our platform, you can buy, sell, trade it. Uh, but recently, as of last week, we've opened up Stacking. Uh, of AVAX, which is, uh, again, we're the only platform in the world right now that is enabling those markets. And I think we're very keenly exploring uh, with the business development teams on your side, uh, other integrations like potentially C-Chain and what have you, which bring even added uh, utility uh, for, you know, for people in uh, on OKCoin. Um, but for us, the exciting part, I think, for AVAX or Avalanche uh, as a protocol is 
it's uh, you know the idea of driving interoperability, complementing Ethereum, not competing with it by building a bridge into DeFi. I think those are really exciting developments, and we're eagerly seeing how the ecosystem gets built out uh, over a period of time. Um, the the key thing that I want to ask you, uh, Gun, is how in you know can you tell us what the what the path has been to attracting developers to come and build on top of the protocol. You know, what are the things that you guys have learned uh, that are going really well or things that have been a challenge? Would just love to hear, you know, as you build the ecosystem, of course, the critical piece is, is attracting developers. How has that been going? Are you satisfied with it? And if you can give us some insights there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we're in a, in a very, uh, we have been blessed uh, with a fairly comfortable path on, uh, in, terms of, uh, uh, in terms of welcoming developers. There are a couple of things that draw people and um, just uh, naturally developers are drawn to the best technology around. And um, so, uh, so because of that, we've had uh, a fair amount of uh, people who are actually building new things in the space come to us. And uh, we've even seen groups that were funded by other projects um, just essentially patch over, like this is a gang term, when a gang changes its, uh, in, its insignia and just completely joins another group. Uh, we've seen projects come over that were funded by others over to Avalanche saying, hey, your thing is the fastest, your thing is actually a great fit for my product, and therefore um, we're going to switch, uh, switch our deployment platform. So um, the big draw here has been better tech. It has been tech that actually works. So when you go to use it, uh, it's it's there and it does what it says, and uh, and so on that front uh, we've been able to attract a, a fair number of uh, people organically. We have also been doing a grant program and an investment uh, investment uh, fund uh, in um, for uh, for newcomers to the space, especially for young energetic um, energetic developers. We've had a grants program in place and. Uh, for capital intensive large uh, large projects, so uh, we have the ca capability to support them as well. So um, uh, so those have been things that have been working in our favor. Now I want to be like this is my first uh, uh, Twitter Spaces appearance, and um, and I think I need to be and I, I want to be characteristically open and honest about where we are. Not everything has gone as smoothly as I would like. Uh, one of the the big issues with Avalanche right now is the difficulty for regular users to come over. Our, we deployed a bridge to Ethereum, as you mentioned, and um, it, was, it was one of the first of its kind that allowed people to, uh, to shed load off of Ethereum to, to use the DeFi on top of Avalanche easily. And, uh, and while it's, it's quite easy to use Avalanche once you're over, it's actually not so easy to, uh, to travel over that bridge right now. So we are actively looking to make that, uh, that process much, much, much more smooth uh, so that normal people can, uh, can navigate it. Um, and uh, uh, so there's, uh, there's always user experience and user interface issues, and we're actively working on, on improving the interface to the point where people can deploy applications to normal people who will interact with Avalanche's contract chain without realizing they're, they're interacting with the blockchain at all. So, um, so there's work to be done on that front, but, uh, but we've actually had a great run and great adoption among the developers and uh, everybody who is doing something in the space uh, just heard of Avalanche. So I'm very, very happy about where we are. Yeah, good. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for that. One, one additional question I just have out of my own intellectual curiosity here is you, you have, you're a researcher, you have research background, you're an academic. I noticed that you guys, it at least says publicly that almost 50% of your staff are researchers. Is that true? And if so, can you talk to us about what the day in the life of uh, you know, an employee at, at Ava Labs is like if you're a researcher? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, I, uh, I, wonder, uh, I wonder what percent of the company is, uh, is, uh, is engaged in, uh, uh, is actually titled researcher. Um, it's it's uh, quite possible it's as high as 50%. Um, a fair number of the people in the, at the company are um, top level people in their field and, uh, you know, with a strong background in academics. And uh, certainly uh, the, uh, the connections I had as, a, as an academic who's been active in the space uh, for many, many years. I've been, I've been active in, in blockchains um, and I'm going to name a date and many people will think I'm making stuff up, but it's easily checkable. Um, I've been active in blockchain since 2002. 
So that predates Bitcoin by many years. So I've been in this space for a long time. And uh, when we started this effort, uh, the, uh, the people who were experts in, in, in blockchains and consensus protocols and distributed systems, um, I tried to draw on as many of them as possible. And uh, quite a few saw the, the, uh, the core insight here, the core vision and joined the company. I don't know the percentage, uh, but it's, it's quite high. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, what's a typical day like? Well, that's, um, that's a great question. I can tell you my day. Um, I can, I, I, it's hard to speak for other people. Um, I like to think that the developers' days are um, fairly well-structured, fairly predictable. Um, there, is, uh, there are teams where internally structured around projects. And um, uh, I try to shield everybody at the company from the, uh, the day-to-day, the sort of the, the stuff that happens in, externally to us. And uh, we work hard on building. I don't know what, the, as I said, the exact percentage of researchers is, but everybody at Alva Labs is a builder. Everybody. That includes the devs. That includes also the business development people. It includes the marketing people. It includes the communications people. Everybody is involved in building a new generation of exciting tools. So that I can say for sure. And during that process, I try to shield everybody uh, from the sort of the, the changes, etc., that that happen in the external world, so they can focus on on uh, the, the sort of the tasks at hand, um, and uh, and often the, the the life of a developer will involve close collaboration with uh, a, a group of other people. That group is typically uh, inter um, uh, inter. Uh, it spans multiple disciplines. It's interdisciplinary. So, um, uh, as I said, but, you know, it's hard to say for, it's hard for me to say anything other than that. Um, my days these days are pretty insane. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's like, uh, there are at least 14 hour days of, uh, constantly worrying about just about everything that's happening at the same time. So that is development of the platform, introducing new features, making sure that the platform is, uh, is, uh, uh, as compelling as it could be, it's presented as well as it could be. Quite a lot of my cycles these days go into, into how to present, how to uh, get the, the word out about Avalanche uh, to, to the masses, um, and, uh, and generally just uh, communicate better about what the platform is capable of, because it is quite revolutionary and it really takes a trained eye to see that. Um, in addition to the platform team, we have a DeFi team that's building innovative new products. These distinguish themselves from uh, you know, many other projects by being community oriented, by being community driven. So, um, so that's, uh, that's a pretty distinctive difference. Um, we have a team that is looking at DEXs and uh, I want the act of, uh, of interacting with digital assets, trading them, buying them, selling them to be uh, absolutely secure, to be a delight essentially. And it's, it's hard to ensure that. Uh, I mean, everyone here has used centralized exchanges. I'm sure everyone here has had a run-in with some of the DEXs that are out there today. Life could be much, much, much better. And in fact, I want to show Wall Street that the infrastructure they're using today is absolutely abysmally, unacceptably bad. And I want to show them what crypto assets are capable of, what well-designed distributed systems are capable of. So um, that's at least three fronts. Uh, then there is, of course, uh, various meetings that we have for partnerships uh, with, uh, with new people, with new projects, with new efforts. And, um, and of course, a lot of my day is spent on uh, communicating with people who work with me, uh, making sure that they have the resources they need and so forth. And, uh, and then to the extent that I get to uh, do anything at all, I, I'd like to spend you know, a, a few hours a day uh, with family. And, uh, and, you know, doing the things that make me happy at the end of the day. So that's me. And uh, uh, that's sort of what we are all about. We're just, uh, we're in a very broad spectrum fashion, attacking the longstanding problems in this space. And, and now you can add uh, Twitter spaces to that list, uh, Gun. We're, uh, we're, we're glad to be part of your first <laughs> one here. <laughs> I, I, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I like this. And I like the fact that there's no video feed. I drove, uh, I drove four hours uh, today to get to the New York office. I'm a complete mess, but, uh, but I really enjoy these kinds of conversations. So thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Um, I, I just want to add, uh, I just want to pivot a little bit to sort of the normal user experience. I think you brought this up, uh, just pivoting a little bit from the developer side. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've seen, at least from our, our side, a lot of progress um, from the AVAX and Avalanche teams uh, over the past few months, 
I, the Ethereum bridge, yes, obviously opened up a lot of new possibilities, but also um, uh, Apricot uh, phase one, you guys, um, there, there's an update that cut fees by uh, 50%. Uh, there were some new integrations. I know our friends at Wire uh, added support for, for AVAX. I think that, that was fantastic. And then also um, DAP Radar, I saw added um, support to track sort of all the, the new applications and uh, DeFi applications on, on uh, Avalanche. So I think that that's, that goes to show that there is uh, you know, significant progress there. And then looking forward a little bit onto your roadmap, I saw you guys uh, uh, announced a new roadmap. Um, you know, I, I think one of the feedback that I personally have, and, and I'm, I'm sure others have, is sort of that wallet experience and, and being confused around how to move, move uh, tokens between different chains. I think there's, uh, I know you guys are working hard on, on um, improving that, but we're also looking to see, I think Hyder mentioned, uh, how we could bring uh, C-chain uh, withdrawals and, and deposits uh, directly onto our platform so users don't have to do that switch later uh, on their own. But I, I think the, the question I have from my side is, from a normal user's perspective, how would you, um, wh what's the, and, and Jay, feel free to jump in too, what, what's, the, uh, what's the compelling reason to use and try uh, the uh, uh, apps and dApps on, on Avalanche today? I, I know it's, a, it's you know, the, the, the technical side, there's a lot of improvements, but what about from a user perspective? So um, let me just take a first stab at it and then uh, hand it over to Jay, if you would. So um, the first reason to try Avalanche is, I think, I'm going to appeal to the curiosity side of the audience. If you want to see the future of blockchains, come take a look. So it's unpolished, as you point out. The uh, wallet experience is a little confusing because nobody has seen a single blockchain that supports multiple virtual machines. And yet here we are. So uh, yes, it's a little rough around the edges. And yes, it takes you know a little bit of complex. It creates some complexity. But this is the future. So come see it in its raw form early on. Um, the second reason to use it is it's so fast that um, it's just so fun to use. So uh, if you're used, used to interacting with Ethereum, the spinning circle in MetaMask, and the waiting for 15 seconds, et cetera, et cetera, you know, try Avalanche. It's within a second, everything is finalized. It's as if you're interacting with a website. It's an amazing experience. And it's, it's, uh, it's more decentralized uh, than, uh, than just about everything out there uh, today. So in fact, it's more decentralized than many PAL chains. So um, those are two good reasons. The third and final thing I want to harp on is for, for many people who are seeking yield, that what they really look for is just some percentage yield. And on that front, uh, we, they should just come by and check out the yields available on Avalanche. Uh, there are DeFi dApps like Pangolin, and there are many other DEXs as well. Um, and uh, quite a few of them are, are, um, are incentivized. Yieldac is there to help you. Uh, Marker is there to help you find the best yields. So there are dApps to help uh, to, for yield farming. And uh, because it's a new system and because there are people motivated to, uh, to win users over, uh, the, the yields are, are, are okay at the moment. They're, they're not, I don't know, they're, they're fine. Um, but in the very, very near future, we're going to have an incentive program to, uh, to boost them as well. So we're in a very good, uh, you know, there's many different reasons to check out what's happening. Jay, do you want to add to this? Sure thing. Yeah. So what I would add to everything what Gun said is we're we're in a very much a phase where we're trying to lay down all of the foundational elements of what the Avalanche smart contract ecosystem looks like. So first and foremost, I think automated market makers, uh, products like Uniswap are highly, highly important for price discovery. You're going to need liquidity first in the ecosystem and then all of these other applications that are a little bit more advanced then your simple peer-to-peer -peer trades or, or even swaps will, will start coming over just because there's liquidity. Like Gun said, I think the, the really cool part about the Avalanche experience, and especially for those who are, are keen on just being in the early adopter cohort and, and trying something revolutionary, is exactly that speed, transaction finality, and also transaction fees. Though Those are getting improved as well as we continue forward in development. And the reason why I say this is um, putting myself in, in the picture for a second. My background, I've been prior to Ava Labs, I was professionally in the space, in the Ethereum space for about three years. And throughout that time, if you can give a time reference, that's probably around 2016, 2017 to around now. And 
what ended up happening is you have all these different applications that are trying to create new and innovative ideas, but unfortunately there was a little bit of a bottleneck, especially as, as the network gets congested. And when you, what you saw during these massive peaks are just inaccessibility to that platform in general. And, and it, became, it only becomes a whales game and what ends up happening for people, I'm sure most people on this, this uh, Twitter spaces is, is we, we just can't even use it. You kind of just watch on the sidelines as, as a lot of the activity happens left to right. So that was kind of the, the problem statement. And with Avalanche, what, what's awesome is a lot of the Ethereum tooling and Ethereum dApps can work out of the box because we have the Ethereum virtual machines. So the cognitive load for someone to switch from Ethereum to Avalanche or even try Avalanche um, as, a, as kind of a first uh, instance of, of the blockchain or smart contracts experience is very, very low. And the craziest thing at the end of the day is Avalanche moves so fast that some of the infrastructure that's built on it actually can't quite keep up with the, the finality that it's able to achieve, which is usually under one second um, across the board. And I think the, the last thing I'll mention is a lot of these things that we're, we've been talking about, especially the new improvements, Apricot, um, a lot of the platform improvements as well, these things are still underway. And that's something that we're highly prioritizing while also trying to leverage business development and marketing initiatives to make sure that we can keep up with this insanely, insanely competitive space. At the end of the day, there's only about two to three million DeFi users. And we want to absolutely make sure that that experience is as strong as possible for that niche. Once you conquer that niche or once you show people how it really works under the hood or even just kind of the, the um, experience of, hey, let's, let's try uh, Pangolin, which is one of the AMMs on Avalanche, or, or let's even do a little bit of, of a complex maneuvering with some of the new lending apps that are coming out on Avalanche, then we truly, truly believe that that night and day difference from for Avalanche versus the rest is going to be um, kind of this world-shattering moment for me. Seeing my MetaMask load in, in, in about a second or two was, was incredible. Also, not incurring hundreds of dollars of fees. Instead, um, only incurring 225 GUE in, um, in respect to Avax, actually. So that price is fixed for now. Um, there are plans to ensure that we can turn it into dynamic fees. So then we can make sure that the, the smart contracts side of things can basically handle the load based on, based on demand. So... That's kind of the, the long and short of why I'm really excited about what's to come with Avalanche. Hey, uh, Jay, that's, that's, uh, thanks for that. Um, I had two quick questions just to follow up on that. One is um, Apricot, uh, which is sort of this, this, this phase of upgrades. Uh, and then later on, there's, uh, I think, Blueberry, right? Um, first question is, why are they named like that? I think that's uh, uh, pretty awesome. And then two is, can you just sum up um, maybe like two or three things that uh, you guys are very excited about in terms of the, on the development roadmap. Um, and that could be for developers or for regular users. I think you, you started to address some of those. Sure, sure. So I think the simple answer for apricot and blueberries is we're, we're trying to keep it a little bit lighthearted and fun, keep it in the fruit theme, at least with the, as it re relates to the platform. We also have plenty of internal code names, so I think one of the one of the things that we've been doing is leaning into Avalanche. I think was the early direction, then Fruits, and I think there's a bunch of other headers. Really, nothing too crazy in that decision. But moving on to the second question of um, what I'm personally most excited about, and maybe Gun can also add a little bit of his as well after after I kind of give you my three. But for me, I think it's all ties to user experience, and this is because as much as I am on the forefront on the marketing side, ensuring that we're getting Avalanche and its respective adapts far and wide. I'm also super, super passionate about user experience and how, um, how this space is moving towards a more simplified version of what we're seeing today. And so with that in mind, I think the Avalanche wallet, V2, and subsequent versions are, are something that has been a long time coming, but we are also pushing it in, at an incredibly fast pace. I think the, the complexities do come from how um, we were architecting certain decisions in the beginning, and we've, we've learned from those decisions and also then made sure that we can adjust appropriately. We're also taking a ton of community feedback. We have dozens and dozens of channels where we collect people's opinions and, and also um, kind of stories on how things have been working to date. A lot of this at the end of the day, we all sometimes forget is very, very new. It's only 10 or so years and the smart contract space has only been existing um, for about five or six years, um, at least in, in uh, on mainnet. And so 
Avalanche Wallet, the Avalanche Bridge, the new version, I think is also something that excites me a lot because that's kind of a, a big, big bottleneck currently where we have an Avalanche Ethereum bridge. It works pretty well. Um, I think it's not our end goal. So that was always our, our intention there. And it's just kind of like, let's try to make sure that we can get a solution out there in this very, very exciting market without wasting too much time. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been pushing solutions out, uh, understanding what the feedback is, and then taking that internally and making sure that we can push out. And also sometimes we've seen a lot of the community um, leaders um, on the professional space starting to speak up. They're saying, hey, maybe we can figure out a better way to optimize Avalanche Ethereum Bridge. I know one project was saying, okay, we could probably do a lot of this off chain. And so they were able to implement um, that solution or, 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 or I, I think is actually under the process of implementing that solution. Similarly, there are other uh, existing projects like REN VM. They were saying, hey, we can just integrate Avalanche and you guys can use the REN tokens, a wrapped version of respective tokens like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Doge, and all these things. And so we can actually just incorporate you, uh, Avalanche in this case, in their ecosystem and just work out very quickly. So what's really cool about this is I think what why we're all in the space and everyone can kind of contribute their ideas. No one's really right or wrong in, in the beginning. It's really hard to determine that. It's really until maybe quarters or even years after those implementations are live, you truly understand what, what's actually going on with what the market values. And I think to close that thought, one anecdote I'll bring is I was one of the, the founding members of Wrapped Bitcoin. So I'm sure a lot of Ethereum people see that happening. And I remember early, early days, we were looking at wrapped Bitcoin and saying, well, I don't know what the decentralized folks will think. I think they might be a little bit critical because of the way we've structured this merchant, um, merchant system where you effectively have crypto institutions service as, uh, as point people or point, point, point uh, I guess, uh, organizations in, in, in actually minting WBDC for every time a user or trader wanted to deposit BTC. Of course, this version is not tru uh, fully trustless. And so that's where we thought the, the issues may, may persist. But now, um, I think as of about, about a month ago, um, I believe I saw a stat out there saying 1% of all of wrapped Bitcoin is now on Ethereum. And that's an incredible, incredible, or sorry, 1% of Bitcoin is now um, exists as wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. That's what I meant to say. And that's an incredible, incredible feat for for anyone that's trying to solve this interoperability problem. So I think those are the two quick points I'll add in terms of what's exciting on the roadmap. Um, we'll throw the mic to Gun if he wants to add anything else there. Um, yeah, very quickly, I'm very excited about Apricot's uh, underlying technical changes, and uh, that will give us dynamic fees, which will give us even lower fees than we do now. So uh, our fees are very, very low, but uh, they're not as low as some completely centralized platforms, but they could be. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's what Apricot is uh, aiming to do. And uh, so that's one. Uh, Blueberry and, and others are going to bring very exciting DeFi dApps on top of us. And uh, one of the key ones there, I already mentioned, new DEXs that the world has not seen yet. They, there is so much more to the DEX game than what we have seen so far. We've already seen, thanks to the, uh, the efforts uh, in the AMM space, we've seen two variants of AMMs, uh, Uniswap pioneered V1 and well, v, whatever, version two and version three, I should say. And, uh, but there is much more that's possible there. And I'm really excited about uh, what's, what's going to come out uh, that I know is coming out. And, uh, and there is far more. There are topics that you've heard of and in, in time, in due course, I want to tackle things that, that everybody has heard, especially thought, you know, supposed thought leaders, they keep going, going on and on and on and on. And if I could characterize the last, you know, whatever, 10 years of uh, blockchain research, it's been mostly people talking without doing anything. I want to show the world how to do identity management on the blockchain as well. So these are topics that have been ignored where I have seen not, not the right kinds of things happening. And it's high time to, to take blockchains to the next level. So I, I imagine there are also uh, going a lot of uh, and Jay uh, a lot of people who are new to crypto here and perhaps they've heard of DeFi. They're attracted to high yields and they want to see how they can uh, they can participate in DeFi. In in simple layman terms, can you both articulate what are the two to three value propositions for like an early entrant? Is it about fees, speed, what have you? I don't want to 
you know, I don't want to articulate that for you. Would love for you, would love to hear what you guys, uh, how you would position this to say your, you know, your your parents or or folks that are new to crypto or new to DeFi. Yeah, I would say the two things I personally would highlight, and I think this is the direction that we've been going fairly recently, is Avalanche is the fastest, most secure smart contracts platform out right now on mainnet in the world. I think that's the qualifying statement. Now, the fast, I think that addresses two of the things that we've been talking about. One is transaction throughput, and the other one is transaction finality or settlement. So for those that don't really know what the finality really means, I would compare that to the traditional banking system. When you have payments transmit from one entity to another, you typically see that, hey, this is going to take three to five business days. And of course, if you take out cash, I think there's a little bit of a separate mechanism there. But at the end of the day, the bank is the intermediary that gives you a loan because you are a worthy customer. That's how that experience is made. So I think it's hard to really translate that. But at the end of the day, if something is fast, people really understand what that means. Something goes from point A to point B as quick as possible. Now, security, I think, is a different pillar that we've been highlighting a little bit more um, uh, loudly, I would say. Um, and I think it's a slightly different from the positioning of decentralization. So that's kind of the tie in I want to bring in to the conversation. Decentralization, for a lot of people on this call, it means something, I think. But the th problem is, is it hasn't really hit its status quo yet, where it really means that one specific thing and everyone can agree upon it. There's always this different opinion about what decentralization truly means. And so with Avalanche, you can have validators and you can have up to millions and millions of validators essentially processing transactions and helping keep Avalanche, the platform, secure. Now, today we have almost a thousand validators that are processing transactions and staking, which, which kind of leans into maybe the discussion that we're having today. But I think at the end of the day, what does that mean for someone who's trading on Avalanche or using a DAP on Avalanche? It effectively means that the single point of failure is now distributed across those validators, as opposed to there are some other smart contract platforms that don't really talk about this so much. And I think you have very, very uh, large projects like DM or Facebook's um, formerly known as Libra, they were choosing that 100 uh, validators was, was to them decentralized enough. We don't think so. We think we can push this farther and farther than anyone else has ever seen to date. And so I think decentralization, to, to round out the point, decentralization equals security in our minds. And then I think FAST uh, encompasses both finality and transaction throughput. Jay, can you talk a little more about the, the transaction confirmation time? I think that's that's a really compelling value proposition. Would love for you to break that down, you and Gun, to just break that down a little more. So, so if, if it's okay, I'll jump in because uh, this is a bit yeah, on the technical side. So, um, uh, so when we so there, are, so here's what happens in this space. There are certain metrics that everybody gravitates towards because they sound simple and uh, and then other people start uh, messing with those metrics and they start uh, making all sorts of crazy claims. We've seen this around TPS, transactions per second. To most people that seems like a way to measure how fast transactions complete. It isn't. So uh, that's a measure of throughput. And uh, imagine uh, imagine a big ship Okay, a big ship that carries lots and lots of goods, but it, it moves very slowly. When it comes, all of a sudden you have a lot of goods, but it, those goods took a long time to come to you. You cannot ship, for example, uh, you know, fresh fresh produce via super tanker, right? You can may, maybe send many, many, many items per second. You know, if you if you divide the items carried per the amount that it took them, but uh, but the latency is high. So the thing that we, we measure when we talk about finality is the time it takes from the submission of a transaction to its final confirmation on the chain. And that time for Avalanche is under a second. It is the fastest blockchain in existence. And, uh, and it doesn't achieve that speed by centralizing the chain. To the contrary, it's also one of the most decentralized chains in existence. So we're in a very odd situation and a very interesting situation where it, this, the system, by virtue of the protocol it uses, it is both more decentralized and therefore more secure and also faster at, uh, at completing transactions. 
when things are faster, then you're able to do things that others cannot. For example, a Uniswap pool is always 15 seconds trailing behind real time. Why? Because 15 seconds is the block confirmation time. And so the things that happen on Uniswap were typically submitted on average, they were submitted 15 seconds ago, and therefore uh, they're out of date by 15 seconds. If you are 15 seconds late on Wall Street, they give away data that's 15 seconds delayed for free because it's worthless. So people are, are fighting for nanoseconds. You want to be as close to the current you know, real time as possible. On Avalanche, you have a different dynamic. The finality is so fast that uh, you can track real time on chain. So that's, uh, that's my short stab at what finality is and why it matters. It's the time from submission to completion. And, uh, and you want both quick finality and high throughput, which is what, uh, what uh, Avalanche delivers by virtue of its new consensus protocol. Perfect. Thank you so much for the explanation, Goon. Um, I have another question here. Um, I guess, how can your community members kind of help further the growth of Avalanche? Yeah, I think there are plenty of different ways. I think the first um, way I'll get out, out of, of the list here is if people visit avax.network backslash community, you'll see all of our community channels, um, not only in English, but across 15 over 15, I think the last I counted could be actually a little higher, maybe like 18 different languages. And so I think we value we value community highly. And I think you're not you're not going to see that many or if, if any at all projects that really value community as much as we at Ava Labs and, and and the group at Avalanche does as well. And the reason why is community is where a lot of the early adopters are are conversing, using products, and really figuring out how much. Uh, or, or how much progress is being made, um, especially as, as it relates to token holders. I think there's a lot of different uh, conversations and activities that can be going on, especially that doesn't exist in Web2 at all. Um, I think that's something that's super interesting. And one of the things that I've personally been seeing, and I know a lot of the marketing community team is seeing, is you have the core channels that we we as Ava Labs and, and some of the community managers are managing. And these are the core branded Avalanche channels. But you're also seeing a offshoot of different niches. You have a staking group. You have another staking group actually um, run by uh, an external party called Avascan. They are a blockchain explorer for Avalanche. Um, you're also seeing DeFi. And I think there's the list goes on and on and on. And those very specific and focused conversations draw out different thoughts. And I think those thoughts are something that we as a team at Avalabs can take very, very seriously. And we do, in fact, do take it seriously. And I think without those voices, whether that be positive or negative, we wouldn't be able to make the decisions that we've made so far to date. Now, I think the at the end of the day, there's a lot of different ways to focus. So let me just distill it down to three besides the, the website URL I gave. One is we are going to start up a, uh, a way for you to actually directly get involved. Um, I think one way to do that right now is at community.avox.network. That's a very good resource. You can earn Avox rewards for uh, completing various growth tasks. I think that's kind of the high level overview. The second I would mention is are the grants. Gun tipped it off a little bit earlier in the conversation. The grants are a really good way for projects or individuals to bootstrap their efforts. And this does not actually have to just be engineering or development folk development focused. We've seen a lot of grants where some someone came in and said, hey, I want to help out with moderating the Avalanche forum. And we were talking to him um, for some time, but actually didn't end up panning out. But that was one of the pr proposals that we were taking very seriously. And I think the, the uh, in addition to the grants and um, the community channel, the last component, I would say, is just really helping us get more visibility with some of the applications that are coming on, on board, especially on Avalanche. And what I'll say is, back in January, back last year, right when Mainnet launched, the team at Avalabs was able to, to really understand the ecosystem pretty specifically. We were seeing new apps come every day at a pace that was somewhat manageable, but still very, very intense. At this point in time, 
we're at a pace where we're seeing applications that we've never even heard of. We're seeing dozens and dozens, if not more applications deploying on Avalanche on a weekly basis. So it would be really amazing for people to hey, speak up and advocate for these applications, say, hey, this is something that's worthwhile for your attention, because at the end of the day, we're only about 100 or so people on board. Jay, can you point us to the applications you guys are most excited about that are that are onboarding? Um, I know I see names like Chainlink on there, but just curious, uh, what what are the ones that you guys get excited about? Whether whether new applications or legacy applications that are onboarding on onto your protocol? Yeah, I think the the biggest bucket that I'm personally most most excited for are those applications that exist but are currently being throttled by their respective blockchain platforms that they're running on. Um, due to likely performance issues or even transaction costs. And so a lot of these legacy applications are talking to us right now and saying, hey, we need a better solution. And it seems like you guys are the most most uh, compatible solution because of the EVM, because of how uh, seasoned our development and our, our wider team is, and also because of how quickly our ecosystem is growing. I think to pick out some of the specifics, some of the lending apps that are coming on, um, I think are really exciting to me. Also, Chainlink, I think, is a really, really big piece, especially as oracles are very, very needed for a lot of these applications. Um, And I think the last bucket would be more actually on the enterprise side. We're having a lot of really strong discussions with very large enterprises where they're coming to us and saying, hey, we weren't really comfortable with the 2017 movement. We weren't even comfortable even maybe like a year or two ago when when things dissipated a little bit. But now I think we're able to dip our toes in the water and have constructive conversations on how we can streamline internal processes, but also even sometimes external, very uh, crypto and decentralized kind of um, mentality-focused implementations of this technology. I'll also let Gun talk about some of the things that he's most excited about as well. Uh, sure. Let me just jump in with, uh, uh, so you did mention Chainlink, uh, which is an enabler for a lot of other things to come. We are talking to many of the big players in the DeFi space. I'm not going to mention them by name, but um, you know, if, if you can name it, if you know the name, then, then probably uh, you know, we've had uh, some conversations with them. And... Uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the things that I can easily name that are really interesting is uh, there's one very, very, very big intellectual property holder. And um, uh, as you know, the NFT craze has hit mainstream, uh, but there are concerns or there have been concerns with, with sustainability of, uh, of proof of work based platforms. So um, I'm really excited about uh, NFTs to come on top of Avalanche. And uh, so uh, I mentioned my excitement around DEXs. Uh, I think that space is going to be revolutionized. So, um, so that's three right off the bat. And uh, uh, there, are, there are many, many more. And, um, and um, you know, what actually really excites me are the small, um, small energetic groups that are doing their own thing. So for example, a few weeks ago, someone did, uh, did crypto seals on top of us. And um, and they were they just became a thing that everybody adopted. And uh, you know he's a young developer that just decided, hey, I'll just put together this thing, and um, and and hit it, hit it big because we have this this awesome community that is eager to adopt new new solutions, eager to play with new exciting things, and we have the system that can handle the load. So um, so anyhow, so those are the types of things. I, you know, I'm really excited about about uh, what people bring in that. Uh, that I can't anticipate, and uh, there's been quite a few of those on Avalanche, and uh, that's uh, those kinds of surprises are the very best things that the system designer can hope for. Yeah, there's so um, much. Hey, great uh, stuff. I, I also I, I also want to add that uh, Tether is coming onto Avalanche soon, right? I thought oh, yeah. I remember. Stable, yeah, stable I think coins. that's a... stable coins of different kinds. Oh, Certainly, yes, yes. I've forgotten which ones we have made, what what we've announced publicly, and what we haven't. And uh, yes, I think, uh, yeah, the tether is coming on board. We did announce this publicly. I'm really thrilled, really excited to see tether uh, on on Avalanche. Yeah, there's so much to unpack here. I feel like we just scratched the surface in this one session. Uh, I I know we're coming up at the top of the hour, uh, and Jeffrey is going to keep us honest here, but. Uh, Goon, Jay, I, I hope we get to do part two of this and, and go deeper into NFTs, DEXs, and, and some of the other stuff that you, uh, you guys highlighted. Absolutely. We would be thrilled. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for supporting Avalanche. 
course, we're very excited to do so. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, community has always, you know, played a huge part in the development of any projects. And so um, we've actually recently brought something to our community, um, staking Avalanche on OKCoin. Um, Tiana, do you want to give a brief overview on kind of what that looks like and how people might be able to participate? Yeah, for sure. Tiano from OKCoin team, uh, product marketing here. Um, so yes, um, clearly we're very excited about um, about all this and partnering with uh, with Avax and Avalanche. And uh, so we we've just announced our um, Avax uh, staking offer. And um, so if we take a step back around like OKCoin Earn, I think it's worth highlighting like how like we've made it pretty easy to go from um, cash to crypto. And then holding crypto and and then start earning rewards on on your assets. And so um, now we have AVAX as part of that. Um, we don't charge any fees as well for um, for our, our earn product. Um, and so it's a it's a great um, it's a great offer for um, people that are getting started with crypto. They're trying to learn about it. Um, less technical um, people as well. And so specifically on, on the AVAX staking um, uh, offer, we, um, you can start with as low as like one, um, one um, uh, token. And the staking period is uh, 15 days and you earn rewards um, paid uh, daily as well. So um, again, it's a, it's a very simple um, experience. And like literally as I speak with you guys, and like I know we don't have um, a screen here, here on video, but if you go to OKCoin slash earn and you click on um, deposit um, on the um, on AVAX, uh, it's a two-step um, process there. So you enter how many um, tokens you want to you want to stake, uh, click continue and uh, and click deposit, and uh, that's it. You're done. And so um, again, a great um, option for people that are getting started uh, with with crypto and not only wanna want to want to hold uh, different assets but also um but also start earning rewards on those and, and getting getting your crypto sort of to work for you as well so um check it out um it's um okcoin um dot com slash earn and uh jeff i'm not sure if we want to transition into any any questions i know like we don't have a ton of time but yeah, I think we're coming close up on time. And I know the Lunar Crush team, John and Joe, um, I know you guys are here. If you guys have any, sorry, <laughs> time's kind of running low, but in, if you guys have any sort of questions, you guys want to jump in, feel free to as well. Glad to have you guys. Yeah, I, I think just more of a, of a, a point in general. I mean, um, you, know, you guys have spent the last hour talking about just the tremendous utility that Avalanche is building out. Um, you know, I remember we had we had Jay on our Lunar Crush live show back February 10th. It feels like two years ago at this point. Um, it's interesting because when we look at the social activity going on, um, it just keeps increasing um, for Avalanche. And what's really interesting about it is when you dive deeper, it's the ecosystem that's being built on Avalanche that is like accelerating that growth. Um, you know, when we see a lot of the top influencers, I mean, we see we see OK Coin on there, but we also see you know like Zero Exchange, Canary Exchange, Pangolin. We see a bunch of different uh, projects that are all really working on behalf of the Avalanche community and really expanding that out. So I think that's a really interesting thing, and I think that just goes to show that when you build the utility out, um, the community follows. And so you know, well done. Really exciting to 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 track all this activity. A lot a lot of social activity going on. Indeed, we're, we are. We are thankful to our community. We're very grateful to our community, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's wonderful to see it grow, kind of like an avalanche. It's uh, it's expanding. And um, to round out the previous question about what to do, we would love for our community to get involved more deeply to help us get the word out and uh, to direct people, especially builders, onto the platform. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't thank Goon and Jay uh, more and the Lunar Crush team. Uh, I I think it's safe to say. I think two two key takeaways personally from my side. We should do part two of this. There's a lot more that I think we can unpack. And secondly, I think we should we should expand our marketing. I think there's a after, now that we've done these integrations, uh, staking is available, trading buy sell is available. I think the next thing to do is uh, work together in in making sure the world is aware of 
of these utilities and how to participate in this uh, in this ecosystem. So I look forward uh, for both teams to do that. Likewise, we'd be thrilled. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah, for Thanks, sure.